This film is based on a true story. In the opening shots, we see military pilots preparing for battle. Lewis, Phil, Cap and Mac are battle buddies. They have localized the target, but suddenly enemies began to shoot at the squadron. On top of that, the bomb bay was jammed. The Japanese plane was approaching, complicating the task. Lewis Samparini tried to close the hatch while the guys fired at the enemy, but in vain. One of the guys is hit. Lewis starts giving him first aid, promising he'll be okay. The shelling did not stop. Finally, the enemy plane was shot down. It took five hours to reach the base, and now the most important thing is to hold out for this time. Lewis remembers listening to the priest preach as a child. The boy is bored and looks around, causing his father's displeasure. During the day as is often the case, Lewis got in trouble with the law, but he managed to escape from the policeman. Suddenly he was surrounded by a crowd of hooligans. The guys started laughing at Lewis's Italian background and were about to beat him up, but Lewis was not shy and fought back. The policeman stopped the fight and brought the boy home. Lewis was always getting into fights, so his mother Louise is used to it. She does not speak English, so she tells her son off in Italian. In the evening the father punished him. The parents no longer know how to cope with their son. Before going to bed, the mother prays for him. Lewis drinks alcohol from a milk bottle painted white. He peeks at the girls who are watching the runners compete. Suddenly Lewis is spotted and has to run away urgently. He overtook each of the athletes. Later, Lewis's older brother Pete forces him to train in order to qualify for the team. Lewis does not believe in his abilities, but the brother gives him confidence. All right, you train, you fight, way harder than those other guys. The day of the competition came. At first Lewis ran last, but then he overtook everyone. After many years, he continues to train to become the best of the best. At another competition, Lewis wins. Pete is proud of him, and all the girls admire. The second race was more intense, with many fans in the stands. Lewis won again. So he officially became the fastest high school student in American history. Lewis is going to participate in the Olympics in Germany. He doesn't expect to win, but he really wants to try his hand at it. He and Pete said goodbye. Lewis is very fond of his brother, because he is the one who inspired him to play sports. Lewis went on the way. In the present, he and his comrades are in the cockpit of a crumbling plane. Despite the breakdowns, Phil was able to land the plane in a wooded area. Everyone burst into hysterical laughter. They survived, and that's the most important thing. However, one of the guys passed away because of a bullet wound. At the military base, the soldiers are training. Lewis runs the fastest and is going to break his own record. Soon the soldiers were sent on a rescue mission. They had to find a plane that had crash-landed directly into the water. The search was going nowhere. Suddenly the plane's engines began to fail. The crew also had to make an emergency landing directly into the Pacific Ocean. Lewis recalls the Olympics that took place in Germany. He was able to qualify for the finals. The last stage of the competition is upon us. All the runners are desperately fighting for first place. Lewis's family and neighbors listen to the competition broadcast on the radio. Everyone is very excited. Lewis is still behind the competitors, but on the last lap he takes the lead. Lewis broke the record of all previous participants. In the present, the soldiers landed directly into the ocean. The plane split in two, Lewis went underwater with it. Finally, he managed to swim out. Phil and Mac also able to escape. The guys climbed into the lifeboat. Two of the guys are dead, and Mac thinks they are doomed too. Lewis found some chocolate and water. That's all they have. The guys have no choice but to wait for help. At night they felt a strange stirring under the water. It turned out to be sharks. The next morning the guys saw an airplane in the sky. They used the signal die to draw attention to themselves, but remained undetected. Lewis discovers that Mac ate almost all the chocolate. Mac doesn't feel guilty because he is convinced that they don't have long to live. Three days passed. Mac's nerves gave out and he began to cry. The guys were all alone in the middle of the vast ocean. At one point a seagull landed on the boat. The friends caught the bird, but after eating they all started vomiting. They attempted to fish for gull meat. Soon Phil managed to catch one fish, and the guys were finally able to eat relatively normally. To keep from going crazy, they tried to talk more. Lewis misses his family very much and hopes to be able to go home. Eighteen days have passed. There is less and less hope for salvation. The guys wonder why they survived and the others didn't. If they are saved, 
God must have a plan for them. In the afternoon a violent storm broke out. The boats were barely held in the water. Lewis and his friends had only to pray and trust in God. The storm ended, and it began to rain, the only source of fresh water now. It was a real miracle. Later, the guys caught a very big fish. 27 days passed. Suddenly a plane appeared in the sky again. Lewis fired a flare and the plane turned toward them. They could not believe that rescue was near. Suddenly the guys started getting shot at, and they dove into the water. They were surrounded by predatory fish, so they had to climb back into the dinghy. The firing began again. Lewis jumped into the water and his friends stayed in the boat. When Lewis swam out, the Japanese plane was already far away. Fortunately, the guys survived, but the bullet pierced the dinghy. When they tried to seal the gap, they were attacked by a shark. Mac managed to fight it off with an oar. They got the gap patched up after all. The guys were gradually losing their strength and the rest of their hope. Mac feels particularly bad and believes that this night will be his last. The friends encourage him in every way they can. And so it was. Mac passed away, and his friends, after saying goodbye to him, lowered him into the water. It was the 45th day. When the guys were found, they could do nothing from weakness. There was an enemy ship in front of them. The prisoners of war were locked in the cells next door. Lewis was forced to listen helplessly and watch through the gap as a friend was subjected to beatings. On the wall, Lewis found the names of the previous prisoners scratched out. Rice was thrown to him as food. He had to eat it right off the floor. Lewis was soon brought in for interrogation. He was asked what the disposition of the troops in Hawaii was. Lewis replied that he did not know. The colonel recognized Lewis, who is a famous track and field athlete. Lewis was made to draw a diagram of Norton's scope, but instead he drew a diagram of a radio receiver. Phil was brought in next for interrogation. The days turned into one continuous nightmare. Soon all the blindfolded prisoners were going to be transported to another place. Lewis and Phil were put in different trucks. They were taken through Tokyo. Lewis used to dream of being here for the Olympics, but the Olympics were cancelled because of the war. Soon Lewis and the others were transported to a POW camp. Young Corporal Watanabe explained clearly that they were all enemies of Japan and would be treated accordingly. Watanabe didn't like Lewis's look, who didn't look frightened. He was punished for that. Despite numerous blows, Lewis stood up. Watanabe explained the rules that are observed in the camp. New prisoners will be placed in quarantine, and then they will be assigned to barracks. In quarantine they were forced to stand for several hours. Tom Miller was in charge of the barracks, and he assigned the newcomers to their bunks. The comrades in misfortune told Luis about Watanabe, who had grown up in a wealthy family. He dreamed of becoming an officer, but was rejected. Among the prisoners is Captain John Fitzgerald. The enemies try to beat the answers out of him, but John withstands any pain. In the morning the prisoners were lined up in rows. Strict discipline is enforced in the camp. Watanabe also explained that there are many talented people here, including an opera singer, a chef, and Olympic athlete. Lewis was forced to compete with another prisoner. He was too exhausted and could hardly run. Watanabe was unhappy with his losing and punished him. In the evenings in the barracks, the prisoners secretly copied maps to keep track of the war. During the day, the prisoners of war worked hard under the scorching sun. One day the Japanese found the copied maps. John was punished for that in front of the others. Later, John told Lewis that their priority is to survive and not break. That will be their main revenge against the enemies. During another interrogation, the enemies tell Lewis that America has declared that the Olympic champion died in the war. So they will let him refute it on a popular show. Soon he was taken to the program the postman called. For two years the family had not heard from their son. They couldn't believe he was alive. Soon Lewis was asked again to speak live and was given a script. Lewis refused to say it because it was a slander of the homeland. He was given a choice, either go back to the camp or speak live. Of course Lewis chose the first option. Watanabe made it clear to Lewis that he had made a mistake when he chose to remain an enemy rather than a friend. For this, Watanabe decided to teach him a lesson and made the other prisoners participate. They were not going to do it, but suddenly the jailers brought in an emaciated prisoner of war, hinting that insubordination would be costly. Lewis asked his co-workers to do what Watanabe asked them to do to save their comrade. They had no choice but to obey. By the end of the day Lewis was barely alive. It snowed. The prisoners were forced to put on a play. Watanabe told Lewis the good news, he has been promoted. Tomorrow he will leave the camp. 
The next day the corporal did leave. In the barracks before going to bed, some of the inmates played cards. John and Lewis thought about their families. Suddenly in the middle of the night, the military alarm sounded. Explosions rang out nearby and the roofs of the barracks began to burn. John who had recently overheard the officers talking, reported that if the Allied forces were victorious, the Japanese would get rid of all the prisoners. The next morning the prisoners of war were going to be transported to another camp, away from the Allied troops. Many ordinary civilians died after the bombing. The prisoners did not know what awaited them next. They were transported by train. It was very cold in the new camp. In addition, the prisoners of war here were exhausted by hard labor in the coal mine. Lewis almost fainted when he saw the familiar face. Watanabe is now a sergeant. He gave exactly the same speech as the last time. Lewis got hit again. None of the allies know they are here. Some have already accepted their fate. The days passed in hard work. Sometimes the prisoners would fall from impotence straight down. One day Watanabe announced that American President Roosevelt had passed away. It made one of the prisoners cry. While working, Lewis was pushed by a jailer and hurt his leg. Now Lewis has a bad limp. The waking nightmare did not stop. Lewis could no longer work productively because of his health condition, and for this reason Watanabe forced him to lift a heavy building bar. Despite his weakness, Lewis managed it. Watanabe made him stay in this position, otherwise it would cost him his life. Lewis held on with the last of his strength, but even after much time, he did not drop his burden. All the prisoners and guards watched closely. Watanabe was perplexed by the prisoner's will to live. At one point Lewis raised the building bar high above his head. Watanabe ordered the prisoner to lower his eyes, but he disobeyed. In a rage, Watanabe attacked him and once again punished him. Soon it was announced that the war was over. In honor of the great future of the United Nations, the prisoners were invited to bathe in the Hokora River. The prisoners of war decided that this is the end of them. The soldiers walked doomfully toward their fate. Suddenly an airplane appeared in the sky. Allied troops arrived. The prisoners realized that America had not lost and no one was going to get rid of them. The former prisoners of war had been fed and were preparing to be taken home. Lewis wanted to say goodbye to Watanabe, but he was no longer here. Lewis kissed his native land. The family and all the people were happy that he had finally come home.